Spencer. Hey, good morning. I'd like to introduce you and the listeners to Erica Stewart and Mary Dessel from the Wazoo Mason County Master Gardeners. Good morning. 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 How are you guys doing? Good. Thank Great. You. New year, new series of uh, Through the Garden Gate workshops are coming up. The first one's on Saturday. These are always a lot of fun, and the location these days is the Public Works Building. Yes. So talk to us a little bit about the first one coming up and what else we can expect throughout the uh, rest of the series. Well, the first one, as you said, is this Saturday. It starts at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we're having a professional landscaper come in and teach us landscape fundamentals. Nice. I think so. I think that's really gonna be interesting. How and much of the conversation is about including the native plants to the area or is it a conversation just general? I think it's probably gonna be more general. Okay. But uh, I would guess that she also includes natives in her landscaping schemes these days because that's very popular. What are some of the, what are some of the ways the master gardeners, maybe even you guys have in your garden set up for a, for a nice look at the landscape that kind of helps the whole environment, your whole plot of land? Is there anything specific, the way you, where you put your trees or? Well, shrubs? I think that's what we're going to learn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we thought that that would make a really great introduction to our series, the six workshops that we're going to have this winter in that that way people can really kind of get these principles down and it has a lot to do with you know the right plant the right place and kind of knowing your landscape you know where your shade is where your sun is the amount of water little microclimates all of that sort of thing and then from there you can go on um, in our other workshops we'll be talking about plants but you'll know where to put them and what would work best yeah so this sets is sort of a, a fundamental class a, a starting class for some of these other classes even so and the second part of that that class the second um, speaker is going to talk about um, how to enhance your off-season garden so hmm. we we all know that spring and summer, you know, we can have beautiful things in our yard, but but she's going to introduce some plants that, that are really pretty in the winter, in the in the fall and the winter and the real early spring. So that should be interesting. I'm looking forward to that one. I don't have a green thumb to save my life, so this would be valuable to me. I, my wife, thank God, is good at this stuff, but I'm great at Farmville. How come in real life I can't, I can't, I can't even keep silk plants alive? I mean, honestly, but... This is actually very informative stuff because we, we have land now. Um, we have five acres, and a lot of it is stuff we can plant on and landscape. And I just have zero imagination when it comes to this stuff. I don't know the first oh, thing about it, so I'm totally confused. I think this first workshop would be just fantastic for you. And you, you or your yeah, wife, yeah. either one, both. Yeah, both. And even just the second workshop, you know, from there you've got the ground set as far as you know, the garden design principles, and then we, in our second workshop, we bring in this whole idea of perennials that you know and love. So it's kind of some of the showcase plants, like you know, roses and dahlias and peonies and lavender. Um, and then Carl Lortz is, um, has a business on Heath and Heather in mm. our area, and mm -hmm. she will be coming and doing that talk. So it should be. A great opportunity then to enhance your garden, make it look really beautiful. And after doing the first workshop, you'll know where to put the plants. <laughs> and when it comes to the perennials, are these uh, mostly native plants to our area or are you bringing in uh, other plants that help to supplement your garden? No, these w these particular plants are not native plants. Okay. They're, these are all, um, you know, cultivated plants, um, that people we try to choose plants that we know that people love sure sure so heaths and heathers you know um lavenders roses those things okay. that people love but this particular series will not really go into the native plants as much there is a series though that will um talk about some of the natives we're going to be doing a series on fire mm -hmm. um lands can your landscape take the heat because as we're getting kind of drier, like last summer, yeah, and we, I live on an acreage also, um, and you know, just the threat of fire is is much greater now. So 
native plants are plants that really can take the heat more than, than many of the plants. So we'll be certainly touching on native plants in that. I was going to say, we're spoiled now with this climate. We came from a dry area of California where we felt we couldn't grow anything. Things that you could you take for granted here, we, we couldn't plant. It would just die every summer. It would get too hot. Yeah. So we're looking forward to planting things we've never been able to plant before. Well, we're, we're having, we're experiencing a little bit of, of climate change perhaps here. At least the last few summers have been quite hot. Yeah. We, and we know wave. that when we do yeah. um, a yeah. clinic, we do a clinic on Mondays from 12 to 3, a lot of people were bringing in uh, tree branches and saying, what's wrong with my tree? Well, they're, they're just, the drought is, is just yeah. killing some of the trees. It's really wow. decimating some of the uh, cedar trees and yeah. things. So, so this is the, this particular workshop on the ninth will be we call it uh, "Can Your Landscape Take the Heat," and it's going to be about plants that are good to put in that are more fire resistant, and probably a bit about where to place them. Sure. You know, uh, then we're going to have a speaker who talks about. Um, plants that can take a warmer climate so he'll he'll introduce us to plants that would be you know that we might want to take some of our cooler weather things out and replace them with these plants and then the third part of that is about uh, drip irrigation which is a wonderful way to water and very conservative of water i so. installed a drip system in yeah. my yard and it it works great. Yeah. It is very, I mean, it's precise. You have exactly. it right there at the root bulbs yeah. or right around yeah. just the areas you need. Yeah. It doesn't waste any of the yeah, water. Exactly. No. And, and it was fun to put together. It was kind of like an engineering ticker, project. Ticker, like ticker toys, kind of, yeah. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> so to a month uh, through March here, the first mm -hmm. one's coming up Saturday. Year-round landscaping, a great way to kick off the uh, gardening workshops and through the garden gate. Nine to noon, just five bucks. Public works. Do you need to RSVP or are you going to show up? Or? No, There's just no show up. RSVPs. Okay. Just we show do up. have one workshop that we're kind of highlighting this year, and that's our last one on March 23rd. And you would have an opportunity in that workshop to graft your own apple tree that you can then take home and put in your yard, which that's would awesome. be really cool. That's awesome. Have your friends over after it gets a little bit bigger, when it starts producing fruit and I did this. Have your own apples. Did you? Yeah. What's the timeline on before you maybe see at least some growth and then is it well, like you'll seven see, years? You, should, you should see growth right away, yeah. but it would depend on the variety of apple. So there That's would be it. quite a, a range of, um, you know, when it would be mature. That wraps the series yeah. on the 23rd yeah. of March. Yeah. yeah. So that series, that particular workshop is really on pruning and grafting. And so that's um, just our typical workshop, but then it'll be open to 25 people okay. who would pay an extra fee of $10 to go home with their own apple tree. So they'll have the opportunity to graft the cyan wood onto rootstock. And, um, that's awesome. and we have that's experts cool. um, from the um, Olympia Fruit Society as well. So. Francesca Ritson, as well as Lowell Cordes, will be helping with that. And they're well known in the community for these skills of pruning and grafting. Facebook.com slash Mason County Master Gardeners, also at 360-427-9670, extension 680. We'll put the links to this in the show notes when we post the interview. Okay, great. Can I make just one more Please. little quick comment? I would say that for this last one, we, we do have to limit it to 25 people who will do the actual grafting, but other people are welcome to stay and watch. Oh, okay. So they can't participate in the in the grafting but they can see how to do it very so. cool yeah and we encourage pre-registration for that because it will fill oh, up we've yeah. already it got certainly people will. already have people yeah, signing, signing up for in. that one well yeah. we'll post this uh, interview up on our website also link it to your facebook page for the mason county wsu master gardeners this saturday nine to <laughs> noon public works year-round landscaping uh, there's always things you can do out there in the yard. Yes. yes. It's very cool. Uh, Erica, Mary, good to see you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Happy Happy so much for Thank having you. us. Thank you.